back, everyone. You might remember uh, a few days ago, I put out a video that was talking about this supposed fact check about something that Trump had said, and it was done by this national correspondent from the Washington Post. Uh, his name's Philip Bump, and he looks suspiciously like Andy Richter, if, if you can see here. Uh, if you're familiar with Andy Richter from the Conan O'Brien show, at least back when I used to watch it in the late 90s, early 2000s. Anyway, he tried to call out Trump for stating that the 20 most violent cities in the country are all run by Democrats. And he then proceeded to prove Trump right in this fact check of what Trump had said. And uh, and not to rehash the whole thing, you should go back and watch the video if you want to see it. Uh, but uh, Trump could have said it better. He could have said that most, uh, most of the violent cities in the country are run by Democrats. That would have been more accurate. Uh, because the truth is, two of them are run by independents, one of them is run by Republicans. But the vast majority of these violent cities are run by Democrats. And um, actually, I'll probably pop up a graphic there so you can see that. It was a graphic that was actually in the piece. So the piece actually put a graph in it that debunked their own fact check. But um, as I pointed out at the time, that this is sort of... Uh, I'm starting to see a pattern here, and this goes back quite a while. I mean, back to the beginning of Trump's presidency. Uh, but I've noticed that uh, they've crafted these fact checks in such a way that if you just read the headline and that's it, or maybe even just a little bit into the article, you're going to walk away uh, thinking, you know, thinking that Trump is a liar and you're going to go out and you're going to accost anybody who says otherwise uh, because you saw it in a fact check. So we're going to get into all that. I want to show you guys this pattern of fake fact checks that are obviously propaganda. But first, just give me 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer for my subscribers from this episode's sponsor, Biotrust Ageless Multicollagen. Let me show you all one of the things that's helping me to look better and feel great. Collagen may be the closest thing that we ever get to a real fountain of youth. And many health experts now agree consuming collagen is as crucial as it gets to renewing and revitalizing how you look and feel. So visit my page at www.healthwithdronetech.com and secure your supply of the best collagen on the market. Great example of this is the Washington Post's, uh, their ongoing tally of Trump's bajillion lies. I, I think it may be up to 16,000 or something right now. Uh, but it's this ongoing tally, and uh, it always struck me as odd just because it was such a large number. And to me, when, when I see that, uh, I, I can tell that they're just going for that headline effect. They just want that number out there and people just to think, oh my God, so many lies. This man, everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. Well, uh, it's misleading. It's very misleading because if you look at it, uh, if you actually start to dig into these lies, you'll see that many of them are just like uh, word games uh, or Trump was just wrong about something. I'm not sure how you differentiate being wrong uh, or, or lying. Um, or it's just a difference of opinion, and the issue is debatable. But Washington Post will take a stance on that. Uh, and, and then they attribute these lies to hundreds of statements, each of them. And so that, that's how they get this large number. Don't get me wrong. Trump does blatantly lie about things sometimes or just says off the wall weird things like hearing about windmills causing cancer. Uh, but... That doesn't, you know, that doesn't change the fact that this Washington Post fact check, this tally of lies, is pure propaganda. It's, it's pure propaganda meant to hurt Trump, hurt Republicans, help Democrats. Another great example of this, and I'm going to get to the main one. I just wanted to show you guys uh, this pattern. And there's tons of other ones, but I just kind of picked these ones because they're great examples. Uh, this one's from very early in the in Trump's president. Or it actually is um, before the election. It's in 2015. And you may remember this. He retweeted some crime statistics that show in the in the graphic that black people kill 81% of white homicide victims. Now, if you, and it's a pants on fire. Now, just you just got to look at how long this article is for one because it's really long and I just wonder cuz I already know what's going on here. It's very simple. But it, it it makes me wonder how did the the author of this and the media not not know? Is, is it laziness uh, or is it purposeful? Um, so the problem here is, let's just look at this graphic here real quick. This is the graphic that they did the fact check on. And you'll see that the issue comes here where it says whites killed by blacks, 81%. But if you look right above that, it says whites killed by whites, 16%. Now, that seems really low, right? Anybody looking at that should say, hmm, that, that sounds really low. So if you just scroll down the list here, you'll see where PolitiFact put in their, their numbers. And if you look here, 
Um, they actually show the right numbers. It shows right, it shows right here. Uh, whites killed by blacks, Trump number 81%, FBI number 15%. Okay, but if you scroll up here, whites killed by whites, Trump number 16%, FBI number 82%. Huh, that's odd. So yeah, if you just switch those numbers around, it's correct. Whites killed by whites, 81%. Whites killed by blacks, 16%. Which is right in line, if, if you look at the crime statistics now, they're about that. But you have this huge long article, fact checking, like what is this? It, it's all just, uh, they're saying nothing. They're just trying to deflect and distract when it really was just a simple error of two numbers being flipped around. So this seems like a pretty obvious strategy to me that's being played out, where they put out these fact checks that aren't really fact checks, it's really just, you know, it, it, it's subterfuge is what it really is, because if you actually read into the article, you find that they're not really debunking what was said, just parsing everything down in such a way that it creates enough subterfuge to deflect from the fact that what was originally said is actually true. So that brings us to this latest example from the USA Today uh, fact check section from a person named Devon Link. I think that's a female. And um, <clears throat> the headline of this is fact check. Democrat Party did not found the KKK, did not start the Civil War. Uh, that's kind of strange because I'm pretty sure they did. I, I'm not a historian, but I'm pretty sure they did. Uh, if you just read the headline, you're going to go out into the world and browbeat anyone who dares suggest that the KKK was a group started and populated by Democrats. And that's really the purpose of these sort of fake fact checks. Uh, but if you actually read into the article, you'll find that they're just really just parsing the meaning of Democrat Party uh, to deflect blame uh, from the individuals that just happen to be Democrats. So their argument is that it wasn't the Democrat Party. It was just from a bunch of people that happened to be Democrats. Oh, how convenient, right? As if they'd ever, ever extend that sort of spin uh, or, or just generosity to the Republican Party or conservatives. It would never happen. I mean, you see it right now. The, the broad generalizations about the Republican Party always are trying to attach the Republican Party to the KKK, which is absurd when you look at it. I mean, it was started by Democrats just because... Uh, some at some point the parties may have flipped, which they didn't, and I'll get back to that. Just because that doesn't mean that it's suddenly a Republican organization. And the author of the article gives it away. I mean, if you just scroll down a little bit, just read a little bit into it here, you get down to this. Historians agree that although factions of the Democrat Party did majorly contribute to the Civil War's start and the KKK's founding, it's inaccurate to say the party is responsible for either. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's again, these double standards that I talk a lot about in my on my channel, about how the media and the Democrats, they, they hold their political opposition to standards that are politically expedient at the moment, but never themselves. Like if the, if the shoe's on the other foot at some point, they just change the standards and they're never held to that. And we've seen that many times just recently. And again, we would never see this kind of spin in favor of the Republican Party for members of the media. And in fact, we know that they're constantly accused of being these racist Democrats, the Republicans are, claiming that they all left the Democrats and came over to the Republican Party. But that is, that's a myth. And you can go out there and you can, there, there's plenty of information out there that you can find out about it. But I'll just say that in truth, only one Democrat senator out of the 21 um, joined the Republicans after the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And Republicans only uh, got a majority of Southern states, or I'm sorry, a majority of Southern seats in 1994. So if this was a switch of parties, it took a damn long time to happen. Uh, up till 1994, and that's absurd. Uh, I don't see how anybody could ever believe that. So I think what we're seeing here is, is really just revisionist history, and it's really similar to other revisionist history that we're seeing right now with the taking down of statues. Um, the you know they're wanting to take down Mount Rushmore now, which I'm going to talk about in another video. But uh, this is just going to keep going until they could just erase the history and replace it with something their version of our history. And Barack knows that we are going to have to make sacrifices. We are going to have to change our conversation. We're going to have to change our traditions, our history. We're going to have to move into a different place. In regards to that censorship, uh, Newsbusters actually had done a story, a write-up on this fake, fake fact check from USA Today. And uh, actually, <laughs> they had done a post about it on Facebook, and it got censored. That's right, uh, a fact check about a fake fact check that actually confirmed that the original statement is correct 
got um, censored by Facebook. And I've actually seen this sort of like mind bending censorship from Facebook myself um, when, when I've posted pictures. When I posted a cartoon of Trump saying that the virus was from China and they censored that as if the virus came from somewhere other than China, which is just mind bending. I, I don't understand where do they think the virus came from? But the, the same sort of censorship's happening here. Newsbusters points out that the uh, fact-checking network that did this is actually funded by George Soros, none other than. He seems to have his hands into everything that is destroying this country. In regards to USA Today um, and more Facebook fact-checks, there's another example of this here. When they fact-check a meme uh, just from you know, just from the internet on Facebook, saying that in 1964 on the floor of the U.S. Senate, Democrats held the longest filibuster in our nation's history—75 days, all trying to prevent the passing of one thing: the Civil Rights Act. And of course, Facebook censored that. They don't want people knowing the history of Democrats and slavery and racism, the KKK. They want people thinking that it's all white people, it's all white Republicans that were behind that when this is just not the case. So USA Today also fact-checked this claim that the Democrats held up the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And their conclusion at the end here, oh, let me get to it, is that it's partly false. They're ruling, saying, it is true that the Democrats hold the record for the longest filibuster. Okay, that's one of the main claims. But there are a couple aspects to that exact claim that are false or misleading. Hmm. False or misleading? Really? Okay, let's see here. It was 75 days long. Oh, oh, it wasn't 75 days long. It only lasted 60 days. Well, that's crucial to this uh, to this meme, right? I mean, the the main point of this meme is that they held it was the longest filibuster, and they were holding up uh, the Civil Rights Act. Those are the two main. The fact that it was 75 days or 60 days is inconsequential. It doesn't matter. So why would that even be there? Because they're reaching. But it continues there and there should be a distinction made in exactly who was blocking the bill. The majority of Democrats who opposed the 1964 Civil Rights Act were from the southern states. Some Democrats in non-southern states did support the bill. Okay, and how does that debunk anything that's in that meme? It doesn't. And that's the point and that's what I'm talking about here. These fact checks are really just uh, a pretty slick, um, uh, it's, a, it's a slick strategy for revising history. and. It's not surprising why they would want to do that. I mean, they want to retain all black, you know, the, the the vast majority of black people voting for Democrats. And this is how they do it. And I find that very interesting. Uh, and, and you'll see that in these articles that all oh, uh, uh, black Americans decide to start voting for Democrats. Well, I wonder how they got them to do that, because I, I think a question needs to be asked. What have the Democrats done for black Americans exactly from the Civil Rights Act? And what has changed? I mean, a lot has changed, in my opinion, as far as like racial relations go. But they, it seems like a lot of the gripes are still there. They're still the same. And what have Democrats really done? Democrats, it appears to me, want to keep them right where they're at. Nice and dependent on government because that secures their power. And in fact, they want as many people as possible, not just black people, but everybody as dependent on them as possible, uh, going to them for the truth and for the science. And like they are, uh, you know, almost like um, religious scholars to be looked up to and, and to follow blindly. And it just seems like that's what they're setting up here. And that's why they want to cover all this stuff up, because it really it puts a dent in the narrative that it's Republicans who don't care about black Americans. When I think we do care. But we just realize and we see that the Democrats' way of going about things isn't helping anybody. And in the long run, is just going to tear this country down, which is what we're seeing right now. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. also want to just remind everybody to come and check me out over at Parler. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.